Hey everybody, it's Charlie Morgan here and welcome back to another video for the YouTube channel. I hope you're well and welcome to the channel. If you're new, welcome. So um, today I want to talk to you um, briefly about like one little mindset technique or one little, um, I don't know what you'd call it, maybe like a little stoic caveat to mindset, let's just call it that. Um, and this is something that I've been using a lot recently to help me um, prepare for bad things that happen in the future. It could be work-wise or personal-wise, but let's jump in. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name's Charlie, and I've built and scaled two marketing agencies, well, a marketing agency and a consulting agency to seven figures. And now I help other people build and scale their own marketing agencies so they can have a bit more fun and um, basically stop suffering because that's what most agency owners do. If you're suffering, I don't want you to suffer. That's why I have this YouTube channel. So in terms of suffering, let's talk about suffering because it happens right, all the time uh, in life, you're always going to suffer. Now, not always, because there are periods at which you can have a, a, a period of grace, which the Stoics would call it. Um, however, you can pretty much expect that in the future, bad things are going to happen. You're going to lose family members, your business might, you know, go under. There's all sorts of shit, stressful shit that happens, a, a war here, a pandemic here, a, you know, bad things happen all the time. And, and, and human life is really underpinned by suffering and that's the fact of reality and if you refuse to believe that then well you're just deluded and it's going to really bite you in the arse so you need to come to terms with it um however today i want to sort of just walk you through how i deal with suffering um and, and how i deal with it is actually dependent upon how i anticipate it because if you're surprised if, if something in life surprises you then it just shows that your expectations of reality were out of alignment with what reality actually is and presents itself as um, so if you're ever like, oh, I didn't know that was going to happen, or, oh, my reaction to this has been far more extreme, or this made me a lot sadder than I anticipated, then what it means is, like, your, the, the, the anticipation and preparation for the event in which was due to unfold was just completely, you know, um, well misunderstood, right? So let me give you an example of this, right? So there's a, um, I don't know if people do this elsewhere in, in, in the world, um, but there is a sort of like phrase or cliche in, in, in England where like if say someone says something bad right it's like oh like oh like I hope I like so with um let's just take like this this um the pandemic right for example it's like oh I, I really hope that if my grandparents get COVID they don't die right and then someone would say like oh touch wood right and I don't know if this is a phrase that happens elsewhere in the world um but there's this weird sort of superstition in the UK where like if you if you touch some you know wood um, then bad things are less likely to happen. Now, obviously, the cause and effect chain behind that is ridiculous, but it's such a, it's such a cultural, um, like it's such a cultural drive that people just do it anyway. And to be fair, if someone says touch wood and I don't touch wood, I get this cognitive dissonance where I'm like, shit, I'm not behaving in alignment with my culture, and I actually believe that if I touch wood, bad things won't happen. Now, that's obviously not true, but you know, you, you can't help but <clears throat> you know unwind 21 years of conditioning. It's kind of hard. So um, the reason I'm talking about this is because. A lot of people will hope that bad things don't happen. So like if, if, if let's you know, say one of your family members falls ill, right? Or something bad happens, or you know, you, you're looking at the war in Ukraine and you're thinking, shit, am I gonna be conscripted? You're gonna have to fight in Poland or Lithuania or something. Um, and like, obviously what you don't want to do is you don't want to work yourself into an anxious fit in a, a state at which like you can't operate because you're so scared about something bad happening, it would just paralyze you. Um, that's not what I'm saying here, but, the, the the sort of verbatim crux of what I'm trying to say and what I'm trying to communicate here is you don't want to hope that bad things don't happen. You want to hope that you have the strength if they do. So that's that's my sort of um, philosophy that I've been trying to work on for the past um, couple of months now. Um, because I noticed this habit where I was like, oh yeah, like touch wood or, you know, I really hope this doesn't happen or like that. But instead of that, I was like, actually, do you know what? Like, bad things are going to happen. And if I hope something doesn't happen and it does, it's going to destroy me even more than if I didn't expect it to happen in the first place, because then I'd start to lose hope and hope. And that's a pretty dangerous thing, right? You don't want to lose hope and hope. Or, you know, if you have too much faith that something's going to work and it doesn't work, then you lose faith in the thing that hasn't worked, but you also lose faith in faith, right? And that's a, that's a pretty dangerous rabbit hole to go down because, you know, hope, hope and faith are mechanisms for, you know, mechanisms and vehicles of optimism that allow us to have, like, you know, buffers in the world, like psychological buffers against bad things that can happen. And if you haven't got them, you're kind of fucked. But my philosophy is I'm like, I don't want to have faith that, you know, one of my grandparents is going to die. I don't want to, I don't want to hope that I don't have to go to war. What I want is I want to hope that if I do go to war or if my grandparents do die or whatever, something bad happens, I want to hope or have faith in my character. I want to hope that I have the character to deal with it. 
right? Because that, that's in my control. So that way, if something bad happens, let's say a family member passes away, or I do have to go and fight, it's very unlikely, but you know, if I did if it did have to happen, um, like I would want I want to feel like I can have the strength to deal with it. So my hope is actually in internal. My hope isn't on external events that are outside of my control. My hope is channeled into what I can control. And that's a very stoic sort of um, belief system. And it's a very stoic paradigm to develop, which is, in my opinion, a very good paradigm to develop because stoicism is well reputed for being one of the most profound philosophies of, of our generation. Um, at least in the West, it's stoicism used to underpin modern Western culture until, well, the left and all sorts of shit happened. I'm not against the left, I'm not against the right, I don't really have any political opinions, but like Stoics are very hardy and they're very sort of like, you know, you can control what you can control, but then we've got those people complaining about shit that's outside of their control. So we, we've lost we've lost communication somewhere, but you know, I'd rather talk to Seneca than most people these days. Um, but my point here is basically don't hope that bad things aren't gonna happen, hope that you have the strength and the character to deal with them when they do. And the secret there is when, because it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. Now, certain events and specific events may or may not happen, but you can guarantee that around the corner in life, you know, tomorrow or five years or 10 years or 20 years from now, something tragic is going to happen in your life. Human beings are not built to avoid tragedy at all costs, right? Bad things are going to happen. Bad things are going to happen in your life. They're going to happen in my life. They're going to happen in your life. They're going to happen in everyone's life. Whether or not it destroys you and breaks you down is whether or not you anticipate to be st strong towards it happening. Because... Let's say that a family member of mine falls ill with cancer, right? And this has, ha this has happened before, it's pretty close to home, it, it doesn't feel good, it's horrible. But when that happens, and if that happens, I'll obviously hope and pray and have faith that like, I want them to survive and I want them to fight through it. But at the same time, I have to confront the reality because there's a chance, there's a strong chance, like a, a, a numerical chance that the person in question could pass away and die. And I don't want to be left in a position where I've had all this hope and faith and then my hope and faith is out of alignment with what reality will actually do. And then I'm kind of fucked, right? And then what, one of the worst things that can happen is if you hope something to go good and it goes good, then it reinforces the idea that you should rely on aimless hope and aimless faith and like completely be over optimistic about everything that happens. And then what it does is it completely highs your expectations of what's possible to hope and expect and achieve. And then when you don't do that next time, it just kills you even like harder. So it's pretty simple. Just don't hope that bad things won't happen. Just hope that you will have the character and strength to deal with them when they do. So next time, if I'm like touch wood, if someone's like, oh, like, what's an example of it's like, oh, you know, um, Someone, someone I know recently got run over and they, they broke their leg, they're in a wheelchair, it's, it's pretty tragic. Um, and I was like, oh, touch wood that that doesn't hope happen to a member of my family. And then I was actually, no, like, don't hope that. You have to hope that if it does happen, you have the strength to deal with it, right? Because I can't control people's driving habits and I can't control my family's, you know, cognitive ability to look left and right when they cross the road. Those things are just out of my control. But what I can control is my internal strength and the way that I process the information as I receive it. There's a great quote, and I'll end on this, um, from a guy called Victor E. Frankel. Um, and he says, between stimulus and response, there lies a space. In that space lies man's ability to choose his response, and in his response lies his freedom. Now, obviously, we can replace his with her. There's no gender-specific. You know, it's not just men can be strong. Women are just as strong, if not stronger, in certain cases. Um, but I wanted to make this case because Victory Frankel was right. Stimulus is what happens. Response is your response to what happens. Between stimulus and response, we have the freedom to choose our response. And it's the ability to have the prudence to choose the right reaction that will determine the quality of our lives. And most importantly, the quality of our mental health, our stress levels, and whether or not we break down. So that's everything from me. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, you can subscribe. I don't often, like, I do talk about mindset quite a lot on this channel. Um, it's a pretty common theme, but I find that like, I like to treat this channel in two ways. First of all, as a mechanism for providing value and promoting my course. <laughs> There's no fucking bullshit here. The first link in the description will be a link to a funnel where you can explore my course if you want to. You can buy it. Be cool. Um, but the second reason I do this is it's like kind of like a journal. Like when I come across something that helps me deal with life or, you know, 
navigate life in a, in a way that's a bit more um, stoic, for example. Um, I like to record videos because, well, it helps me solidify my understanding of my paradigm and also it might help you in the process. So yeah, that's everything for me. If you did like the video, you can like it because there's a button for that. Uh, also, you can comment if you have any comments or want to add anything or disagree with it, of course. And you can subscribe if you want future videos like this one as well. So I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good day. Take care.